Now we're going to simplify this expression with exponents and justify each step using an exponent property. So anytime we do this, I always encourage you to start out using a given. I mean, whatever they give you, the problem that they give you, that is given. Now, what's my first step? Well, for me, first thing I'm going to do is commute so that all of the same bases go together. And actually, there's one step before that, and it's because I can see that this 27 is actually a power of 3. And I want to get those together, so I'm going to rewrite that the whole thing with this. As, well, maybe not the whole thing. I mean, that's just a little thing. So right above it, I'm going to write what that is. And that is 3 to the third power. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm going to rewrite this now as negative 3 to the first times 3 to the third times f squared times f to the negative 5 times f to the negative 1 times g to the first. Since it doesn't have an exponent, I'm going to put that 1 there. Times g to the third times g to the negative 2. And that would be my commutative property of multiplication. Now I'm going to add the exponents of every power that has the same base. So negative 3 to the 1 plus 3 times f to the 2 plus negative 5 plus negative 1 times g to the 1 plus 3 plus negative 2. And that is our product rule of powers. And when I simplify that to negative 3 to the 4th, f to the negative 4 g squared. That's not really a different step. Both of those steps are the product rule of powers, which is that you add the exponents of all the powers with the same base. But there is one more that I need to do, and I think that we will multiply that out, the negative 3 to the 4th power. And that will be negative 81 g squared all over f to the 4. And that would be simplifying powers. So both um, evaluating, that's what we call it when we do negative 3 to the 4th. Now remember, the base is just the 3. It's not negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. It's just negative 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So that's negative 81 g squared. So Simplifying negative 3 to the 4th to negative 81 is part of simplifying powers. But moving the f to the negative 4 to the denominator, that is called the negative exponent rule. All right, let's do another one. This time we are going to do one where we are dividing the powers. So again, I'm going to start with calling my first step here given. So now the first thing I want to do is break it up into 24 eighteenths times p to the fifth over p. I'm going to go ahead and write into the first power times q, again, to the first power over q to the fourth. And I'm not really sure what to call that, but I do know that if I start out with this and then I take it to that, that's just multiplying fractions. So since it's going doing the same thing but backwards, I'm going to call it multiplying fractions. So now I'm going to simplify 24 eighteenths. Those aren't powers. I'm not going to subtract the exponents. And that is 4 thirds times p to the 5 minus 1 times q to the 1 minus 4. And that is the quotient rule of powers. So then when I subtract those exponents, I get 4 thirds p to the fourth q to the negative three. And again, most likely they're going to want you to write your answer with positive exponents. Oh, before I do that, that is uh, simplifying powers. So I will write my final answer as four p to the fourth over three q cubed. And that is the negative exponent rule.